today I'm talking about crawdads and I'm not going to try and change the way that you fish with crawdads but I am going to try and expand the way you think about fishing with crawdads when it comes to fishing for largemouth bass. Now I was planning on doing this video out on the water today. It doesn't look like the weather is going to hold out. So I'm going to go home, set up the studio, and we're going to get right into the video. All right, let's get into the video and we're going to divide this into two parts. The first part we'll talk about is the life cycle of a crawfish. And the second part, we'll get into choosing some baits and some techniques and, and go over some of that stuff. But uh, before we get into the video, I'd just like to say I've done a ton of research and hours and hours of research, actually. And I want to save you guys from going through the same hell that I did when it comes to doing research on crayfish. So it's all compressed into this video. Uh, but before we get into it, there's a couple of... Um, uh, YouTube sites that have videos on that, that I think are the best that I watch and I want you guys to check them out if you get a chance. One of them is on a YouTube channel called Tyler's Real Fishing. Tyler's a young guy from uh, Texas and he has a really great video on and I think it's the name of the video is How Does a Bass Eat Crayfish? That's one you want to watch and the other site I want to uh, refer you to is Emberson's outdoor photography or Emerson's uh, underwater photography and really great site. He has a ton of uh, videos on it and it shows underwater footage of bass eating crayfish. It shows the crayfish moving around, how they act, how crayfish fight off bass, you know, when they're, when, when the bass are attacking them, so on and so forth. I will put um, the information down in the remarks so that you guys have, you can go watch those videos and it'll give a lot of background on why I am kind of changing my philosophy on what I'm going to be doing come springtime. So anyhow, uh, the life cycle of a crayfish, it's going to be compressed. Most of the crayfish will, uh, during the winter months, when water temperatures are below 50, they're burrowers. So they're going down, they're burrowing out, and they're really not available to, to the bass at that time of year. Now, can you catch fish with crawdad imitations through the winter? Absolutely. And, and I also want to say that whatever you're doing now, especially when it comes to reaction baits, the crank baits that you're throwing, the chatter baits, the lipless baits, um, the jigs, the, the plastics that you're using, keep using them. They're still going to work. I don't want you to change the way that you're catching fish. I just wanted to expand the way you look at fishing crayfish. So we have a, um, uh, a crayfish and we're going to put the winter, uh, the winter life cycle on the back burner and we're going to talk about the primary time between spring summer and into fall when the crayfish are most acti uh, active, when they're spawning, and when they're most readily available to, to bass. The primary uh, family of crayfish that I have done most of the research on is called the Procambarus clarkii. It's a fun word to say and I want to say that again, Procambarus clarkii. That is a ray, red swamp crawfish. The red swamp crawfish is the most widely dispersed crawfish in the United States and it seems like once they're introduced they kind of take over. Let's get right into what happens when the water temperature gets to about 55 degrees. The crayfish seem to start to spawn and get active about the same time that the bass do. So when you start seeing small male bass come into the shallows and start looking to, you know, for looking for, for uh, spawning territory, that's about the same time that underwater, uh, maybe out in a little deeper water, the crayfish are starting to move around. Now these red swamp crawfish are in a family of what they call signal crayfish. And the signal crayfish is a crayfish that uses its pinchers to signal. And most of the time when they're adults, they are signaling that stay away from me, they're in a defensive posture, they're protecting themselves with, the, with their claws. But during the spring, they all, the males also use their claws to signal to females that they're ready to spawn. Water temperature hits about 55 to 60 degrees. The 
the the uh, the bass start moving around the crayfish start to you know uh, come alive and the males are out walking around or strutting around on the rocks they're waving their claws they're signaling to the females come on out we're ready to play females see this they come up and uh, an interesting fact for for the crayfish is that their mating and their spawning do not co-occur. The females have their eggs already all set up in their abdomen. They come up, they collect the sperm from the males. I don't know how this all this happens, I couldn't get into that. But females uh, get uh, collect the sperm from the male and they leave. Now this is important and it has to do with why uh, crayfish are so prolific and why they they have they always seem to have good spawning years they just once they get into a, a pond or a river system or a lake it, they're very hard to get rid of here's the deal females have the eggs and the sperm they they leave the scene of the accident and they do not spawn or fertilize the eggs until everything is just right Till they have the right right water temperature, sunlight penetration. They look for a place where they can fertilize the eggs and drop them so that when they are hatched, they have a high survival rate. And um, you know, they're just very prolific. And I take that in in compared to a, a, a bass. Some years they may go into shallow water, drop their eggs, the water uh, uh, levels fall, and there's no spawn because all the legs eggs are left high and dry. That just doesn't happen with crayfish. And although the females only carry about three to six hundred eggs per female, they have a very high rate of survival once they drop them and, and they, uh, they hatch the eggs. And, and I will also say that uh, m the major spawn for crayfish is in the spring that coincides with the largemouth bass and they will spawn again in the fall. So sometimes, a lot of times they'll have two spawning periods. Very prolific and once I said, like I said, once the red swamp crayfish get into the system, it's, um, it's you know, you're not going to get rid of them. Here's a another piece of information that is very important. These crayfish have about, about a five-year life cycle. Now, once they are hatched, they only take about four months to go from a baby crayfish to an adult, to an adult size. The adult size, the average size for these red swamp crawfish are three to five inches. As these fit, uh, the crayfish are uh, in that first four months, as they're growing, they grow very fast and they molt their exoskeleton many times. As they're molting, they, they turn blotchy colors. Remember that. And don't remember the color right now. It's just as, they, as these skeletons fall off of them, they turn oddball colors. So here's the takeaway from that. During the summer months, when the bass are most active, the crayfish are various sizes. There's adults and there's also juveniles that can be anywhere from one to three inches and then the adults from three to five inches. So think about this when you're fishing next spring. As the bass are hunting around for possible crayfish, they're encountering crayfish that can be one inch, two inch, three inch, four inch, five inch. By scaling down I'm going to catch more fish and let's be honest most of the fish in most of the areas that we're fishing the bass are between about a pound and a half and two and a half pounds those big five six seven eight nine pound bass yeah they'll come up and they'll grab you know these these bigger crawdads with no problem the smaller fish i think kind of key in on the smaller crayfish so keeping that in mind, let's get right into choosing some baits and talking about the rigging and also uh, we're going to talk about some new baits like by Fish Arrow, Heavy Poop, and we're going to talk about from depths uh, the Cover Scat. And these are two baits that, uh, here's, we'll roll these up, these are two baits that are kind of interesting new baits that have really come on the market and, and they're changing the way a lot of people are fishing for bass. Once again, whatever you're using now, keep using it, especially if you're catching fish. And the few things that I want you to take away from this is uh, when it comes spring, smaller baits, 
smaller jigs, use uh, new colors that are molted to represent the crayfish when they are actually, you know, growing and shedding their exoskeleton. And keep your mind totally open to fishing some of these new do-nothing baits. We'll call them the scat baits. So let's go over um, some of the things that I'm going to uh, be changing the way that I fish this year that I haven't in the past. And and again, I, uh, I hope you get a lot of information from what I'm going to talk about right now, but I am going to purposely not focus in on exactly the way I'm going to be rigging these baits. Because if I do that, you guys are going to get pigeonholed into rigging a bait uh, one way, and then, you know, you, you, you lose that, um, you lose that uh, imagination that you have, that I may not have, and the opportunity to maybe figure out some new and exciting ways to fish these baits. Okay, let me go over five or six real quick baits, and I'll, I'll list all these in, uh, in the, um, uh, the remarks so you'll know what, what I'm talking about. And these are little tiny baits, we'll call them micro baits. Uh, then we'll get into uh, some of the bigger baits and, and some of the do-nothing baits. First bait we'll talk about is the Mega Bass Bottle Shrimp. That's what that looks like. Very tiny bait, very finesse bait. The uh, Net Baits Pack a Craw Slim little bitty bait here. We'll talk about the uh, Reaction Innovations Beaver, but we're not going to talk about the Sweet Beaver. We're going to talk about the um, uh, Smallmouth Beaver. And you guys, most of you guys use these, and you can see the difference in size. We're going, we're sizing down on these baits. Uh, we'll also, uh, another good bait might be the uh, Z-Man uh, Turbo Craw, another small little bait here. And don't forget, these are all kind of coming down the line from the Z-Man TRD worms. This may not like may be called a worm, but it probably looks more like a crawdad to the fish when, when they're actually taking them, uh, when the bass are feeding on them. 13 Fishing has a cool one here. It's called the Wobble Craw. I like this one. It's a long, thin craw, and the craws are tucked in. And that, that's important, kind of like the Jackal Archelon. Pretty good sized bait, but the top claws are tucked in. And that's one thing that, that I didn't mention, another takeaway. I'll be fishing baits that, not so, that are not so realistic, especially the ones that have the craws that come up because I think that detours them. So I'm gonna detour myself from these more realistic baits and go to the baits that are uh, maybe easier for the fish to, to grab and digest and eat. Uh, okay, maybe the last bait we'll talk about here is from Gee Crack, and it's called a Beat Craw, another small craw. Okay, uh, we'll list all those up, and the way that you guys may want to be fishing these, uh, again, right along the bottom, very slow, and every now and then, give them a bounce or a twitch. Here's some of the ba here's some of the ways you can rig them up. You can uh, basically uh, you can drop shot them. What do I have here? Uh, I've got a drop shot somewhere. Yeah, uh, just a regular drop shot hook. Set them up like you would a worm. I like to. This is a big. I think this is a Gamagitsu drop shot style. But you can see it's got the um, the swivels on it. I really like the VMC drop shot um, uh, setup with the with the swivels on it. And the reason I like that, it's more of a finesse um, uh, presentation. On this particular bait here, it's really good for um, bigger baits rigged like this. But if you want to use a smaller, uh, draw, a smaller bait with that smaller hook, you can nose hook it. So think about that. That's the difference between these bigger, I'll, I'll say Gamagitsu style uh, drop shot hooks and the VMC. Um, here's one that I, that I have we'll talk about. It's, this is from uh, Frenzy Baits, and this is a little, um, uh, it's, I don't know what they call this, but it's kind of like a little Tokyo rig. And it, it's a free floating head, and here's the hook, a very small hook. And again, when you have a small bait, it allows you to nose hook this and just pull it through rather than, than hook it regular uh, T-Rig style. So it allows you to nose hook the baits there. So that's one way you can set, a uh, couple ways you can set these up. 
Uh, ball head jigs. This is a, a great way to fish a lot of the mid-size crayfish. This is that 13 bait. And although it's a pretty good size bait, you'll notice that the claws are not really, you know, um, very daunting. They're, they're not, they're tucked in and it's a very slim bait. So using these on a, a ball head style jig is really great. Um, Bass Union, you guys are familiar with Bass Union. They have some very finesse heads that you can use, again, for these little baits. Rig these up and just bounce them along the bottom and they should, uh, they, the, the small bait should pick up a lot of bites for you. Uh, what else are we talking about here? Oh, Tokyo rigs. That's one that I know some of you guys are using, but the Tokyo rig, uh, when it comes to just dragging smaller imitations down along the bottom is gonna be a good setup for you. With that, let's get right into these, we'll call them do nothing baits. And uh, there's two baits that I wanna introduce you to if you haven't found them. One of them is from Fish Arrow, Heavy Poop. And uh, let me I'll put, put, a, put that guy up there. That's the Heavy Poop and the no crap. Uh, this is the Depths uh, Cover Craw, and uh, this is, I think, a two and a half inch version of it. Two baits that you guys should, should get a bag of and give it a try. Uh, the, first of all, I like these baits, number one, because they are uh, extremely tough, uh, made out of tough plastic. So unlike, well, I'll say a Yamamoto worm where you might catch one, two or three fish, you can catch 10 or 12 fish on these things. Uh, they're very heavy. They're meant to be fished without weight. Now this Depths Cover Scat, this guy here, it's meant to be fished on a wide gap hook. I've got a bigger one here, and I don't know if you can see this or not, but um, there's a little, a little cavity here, and this is the head of the bait. It's meant so that this part of the hook can sit right in that cavity, and then you're gonna, you're gonna rig this. And also on the top, it's got a little hump here where you can actually, you know, uh, kind of text pose the hook so it's totally weedless. Now, I haven't used these a lot. I've gone out and I've thrown them around. I can tell you one thing, they sink like a rock. I think this bait is the four inch and it weighs over a half an ounce. Cast them a mile, they sink like a rock, and they skip like no other bait. If you want to get them under a dock or something, you could throw these things out there and, and they'll just skip right under the dock. So with these things, they're meant, they're do-nothing bait. You're going to throw it out, it's going to go to the bottom. Generally, you're going to have an extra white gap hook. No, um, no uh, a weight at all. They're going to sink on their own. And you're going to just slowly pull them through uh, through the vegetation, over the rocks, whatever you're doing, and every now and then pop them up and let them fall down. You can expect the bite basically coming at any time. As these things pop up, they're mimicking a, a, a crawfish that's trying to get away from a bass. Uh, rather than a crawfish that's a, a natural imitation trying to fight the bass, these are kind of just a less intrusive, you know, do -do 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 -do, going to, all of a sudden the bass sees them. They kind of look like a crayfish that has its, its uh, claws tucked in. And they're not, um, uh, you know, they're not deterred from grabbing them. They, they don't see the claws out there. They, I don't know why, but for some reason, man, everything that I've been reading about these things, they have been uh, just uh, changing people's minds when it comes to fishing crayfish imitations. So with that, I want to leave it. Uh, I, I put a, a ton of information out there for you. And like I said, I, I might be sorry. I didn't tell you guys, man, I'm going to rig this thing exactly like this and blah, blah, blah. Gives you guys a little room to, to move in there and a little, think, a little thinking that's going to have to go on and it's going to make you guys a better fisherman. If you do find a way that uh, you're, you're rigging these and you're having really good success, Hit me up in the comments. I'd like to see what you guys are doing. And as we uh, all go through this learning curve, especially when it comes to fishing these newer style baits, uh, if I get something going, I'll do another uh, uh, video probably a little later in the spring. And um, 
I'll let you know how I'm fishing them and how I'm doing with them. So thank you guys for watching. If you uh, have yet to subscribe, make sure you, you hit that subscribe button and hit the like button. And uh, thanks for watching. And until I see you guys again, I hope to see you on the water. And good luck.